Hello and welcome to another video of biology by perfect scores. This is Preetinder Kaur and we've just done a video on the earthworm and this video is going to focus on the animal that you can see um, on your computer screen that is the cockroach. Now you might have seen cockroaches, you know they're dark colored animals that are present in the class insecta of phylum arthropoda. They can sometimes also be bright yellow, red or even green in color. The size is uh, from one inch to about three inches. They've got long antenna legs and the upper body wall, it's little flattened that conceals their head. So that area that we can see over here is the pro notum that you can see over here. But we'll go ahead and do the morphology of the cockroach and you might be knowing that these are really serious pests and they are vectors of very serious diseases. So they harbor a lot of infections and diseases and they are carriers of such infections also. Now the adults of the common species of cockroach that we are going to discuss, that species is known as Periplaneta americana. So let me put it down over here. That is the scientific name and it's a universal omnipresent insect that is found everywhere. It's about 30 uh, 35 to 55 millimeters long and the wings they extend beyond the tip of the abdomen. So the body of the cockroach is actually divided or divisible into three main areas. The first is the head region, the second is the thorax and the third one is the abdomen. Now in this figure you can see those three areas very carefully. Now the first over here you can see the head is there that has a pair of compound eyes and there are antennae that are originating from the head known as filiform antennae and then there is a structure called the pronotum then is the central area called mesothorax then you have the metathorax and finally the abdomen is there. Now the entire body is covered by a hard skeleton, exoskeleton made up of chitin. So we can call it an exoskeleton that is chitinous in nature. And in each segment the exoskeleton has hardened plates called sclerites in each segment. Now these sclerites are also known by two other names. Dorsally they are known as sturgites and ventrally they are known as sternites. And they are joined to each other by a thin membrane called arthrodial membrane. This membrane, this articular membrane, this helps to join the sclerites of each segment. Now you can easily observe the diagram. The head is a bit like a triangle and it lies anteriorly at right angles to the entire body axis. It is also formed by the fusion of six segments. So let me put it over here with another color. So there, it's formed by the fusion of six segments and it has a very flexible neck. The head capsule, it has a pair of compound eyes and there's a thread of um, antennae, thread-like antennae that come from the membranous sockets that lie in front of the eyes. These are the filiform antennae. They are sensory in nature. They help to monitor the environment. And the anterior end of the head, which we'll be doing uh, later on, it has different parts that are accustomed to form biting and chewing. So we'll do that in, in, in a little while. The thorax over here that you can see the middle part that's basically made up of three further parts the prothorax, the mesothorax and the metathorax. The prothorax is not mentioned. It's actually covered by the pronotum and each thoracic segment it bears a pair of walking legs and that's how the total number of legs come out to three pairs which is actually six. The first pair of wings it comes from the mesothorax and the second pair it comes from the metathorax. So I've mentioned it over there and the head is connected by the neck which we've already done. The four wings which are mesothoracic they're called tegmina. They are opaque that means they're not transparent they're dark and leathery and they cover the hind wings when the cockroach is not flying. 
So let's go ahead and do some information on the mouth parts of the cockroach. So that is the head region that you can see in front of yourself. So over here you can see the compound eyes there, uh, the jaws of the cockroach, the mandible and the maxilla, the cavity called the labrum and the labium which is the upper and the lower lips. And finally you have an ocellus as well. And there's also a kind of structure that acts as a tongue that's called the hypopharynx. It's a flexible lobe that is within the cavity that is enclosed by the mouth parts. So this you can see over here. And the labium is the lower lip. So let me put it over here. That is the lower lip. And the labrum is the upper lip. The mandible and the uh, maxilla, these are basically nothing but the jaws. And coming back to the previous diagram over here, uh, the abdomen in both males and females, it has 10 segments. So let me put it over here. 10 segments in both males and females. Now the seventh one in the females, the seventh one is boat shaped and along with the eighth and ninth, it forms a genital pouch. So seven, eight and nine, it forms a genital pouch. That is only in case of the females. And the anterior part, it contains the female gonopore spermathecal pores and collateral glands so let me put it there so these three things are present in segments number seven eight and nine that are fused together now in the males the genital pouch is at the hind end of the abdomen and coming to the males they have a genital pouch at the hind end the back end of the abdomen which is made up of 10 segments and in the males it consists of the dorsal anus the ventral male genital pore and gonapophysis and the anal cerci are present in both males and females. Uh, the males they have, they also have a pair of short thread like styles that are absent in females. So that is how the cockroach is. By looking at a cockroach you can identify if it's a male or a female. The males also have anal styles near the cerci that are absent in females. And the cerci are on the 10th segment. They're a pair of jointed filamentous structures. So that was about the structure of the cockroach from the outside, the morphology. The next important thing that we need to do is the elementary canal. And this is what the structure looks like. So it's not a very clear diagram, so I'll label it for you. So at the top over here, you can see the pharynx. And then you have the salivary glands, the salivary reservoir, the esophagus, then the crop the gizzard and then the other organs that we'll be doing later but right now you need to know that the elementary canal of a cockroach is divided into three main regions the first one is known as a foregut the second is a midgut and the third one is a hind gut now the mouth opens into this pharynx it leads into the esophagus which is a tube like structure that opens up into a sac-like structure called the crop. So the crop is used for storing food. After this, there is a gizzard or proventriculus. That is the other name for the gizzard. It has a layer of thick circular muscles and a very thick cuticle. And it has six chitinous plates called teeth. So, let's mention it over here. The gizzard basically helps to grind the food particles using those teeth. And the entire foregut, it's lined by the cuticle. So, we need to mention it over here. And uh, there is a ring of 6 to 8 blind tubules that are called hepatic or gastric CK. That you can see over here, these ones, these extensions. That you can see, these are known as hepatic CK or sometimes also known as gastric CK and they are present at the junction of the foregut and the midgut. So everything above this is the foregut and this is the midgut starting from here. At the junction of the midgut and the hindgut there is another 
a ring of 100 to 150 yellow colored tubes or tubules known as Malphigian tubules. So this is at the junction of the midgut and the hindgut. So that is the third area that is the midgut. So this midgut also has another name that is known as mesenteron. And these Malpighian tubules, they help to remove the excretory products from the hemolymph, which is, which is the circulatory fluid of the cockroach's body. The hindgut is, as you can see, a little broader over here. And it's differentiated into three parts, the ilium, the colon, and the rectum. The rectum opens outside through the anus. So that is all that you need to know about the elementary canal of the cockroach. The next important system is the blood vascular system, which is actually of open kind in case of cockroaches. There are no vessels that are there. It's open type. The blood vessels are very poorly developed and they open into the space. That space is known as hemocene. The entire cavity. The visceral organs that are located in the hemocene, they are bathed in blood and that blood is known as hemolymph. It is colorless and it does not have the blood cells. It just has colorless plasma and hemocytes. The heart of the cockroach, it consists of a very elongated muscular tube, tube-like structure that lies along the mid-dorsal line of the thorax and of the abdomen. It is differentiated into these funnel-shaped chambers that have got ostia on either side. So these things, these are known as ostia and these are different chambers of the heart. Now the blood from the sinuses, it enters the heart through the ostia and it is pumped to the sinuses once again. So that is how the circulation takes place. And another important system that you need to know is the respiratory system. Now the respiratory system in the cockroaches, it has a network of trachea. And these trachea, they open through 10 pairs of holes called spiracles. They are present on the lateral side of the body on the sides. Then there are thin branching tubes. Basically these are the tracheal tubes that are subdivided into tracheoles. These are the ones that carry oxygen from the air to all the parts of the body. The opening of the spiracles is regulated through muscular sphincters. And the exchange of gases takes place at the tracheoles through diffusion. The next important system of the cockroach's body is excretion. So excretion is done by the Malphigian tubules. Each tubule is having a lining of glandular and ciliated cells and they absorb the nitrogenous waste products, convert them into uric acid. So nitrogenous waste is converted into uric acid which is then secreted outside through the hindgut. That is why the insect is known as uricotelic because it secretes uric acid. In addition, the fat body called nephrocytes and uh, uricose glands also help in excretion. So they are worth a mention over here. Nephrocytes and uricose glands. The next important system is the nervous system.
Now the nervous system it has a series of fused ganglia. So series of fused ganglia that are joined by connectives. On the ventral side, three of these they lie in the thorax and six they lie in the abdomen. The nervous system is spread throughout the body. The head has a little bit of the nervous system. The rest is situated along the belly side. That means the ventral part of the body. So even if the head of the cockroach is cut off, it will still live for as long as one week because the nervous system is present in the other part of the body also. In the head region, the brain is there, but it's not a completely fully developed brain so brain is actually known as the supraesophageal ganglion so the supraesophageal ganglion which is present in the head that supplies nerves to the antennae and the compound eyes And in the cockroach, the sense organs that are there, they consist of the antennae, the eyes, the maxillary palps that are used in uh, food, eating food, the labial palps. the anal cerci and few more. Now the compound eyes they are situated on the dorsal surface that is the upper surface and each eye it consists of about 2000 hexagonal omatidia. These are like smaller eyes within one compound eye and with the help of with the help of these several omatidia the cockroach can receive several images of a similar common object and this kind of vision is known as mosaic vision it's there in lots of other insects also there is more sensitivity but resolution is very less and it's very very commonly used during the night that is why it is known as nocturnal vision because these animals that have uh, the compound eyes are usually active during the night. Coming to the reproductive system, it's completely different in the different sexes. So here is what the reproductive system of the male cockroach looks like. There is a pair of testes, one on each side in the fourth to the sixth abdominal segments. And from each testes, I hope you're able to see, there is this tubular structure known as vas deferens. It's very thin. It opens into the ejaculatory duct through the seminal vesicles. So this is the ejaculatory duct. And this part over here that you can see, that is the seminal vesicle, this flower-shaped, uh, white-colored part that you can see in the diagram. Now this ejaculatory duct, it opens into the male gonopore, which is present over here, where this yellow-colored structure ends. This is the male gonopore that is ventral to the anus. Now, a characteristic mushroom-shaped gland uh, you might be able to see that is present in the 6th to the 7th abdominal segments. It actually functions as an accessory reproductive gland. The external genitalia, they're represented by the main uh, male gonapophysis or the phallomere that you can see over here. And it has chitin. They are asymmetrical structures. They just surround the moon, male gonopore. The sperms are stored in the seminal vesicles. They are glued together in the form of spermatophores. So sperms are in the bundles. They are stored in the vesicles in form of bundles called spermatophores that are released during the mating process. The female reproductive system, on the other hand, let's go to that. So this is the female reproductive system, a little more clearer. 
Uh, the female reproductive system has two large ovaries. They are situated in the second to the sixth segments of the abdomen. Each ovary has about eight ovarian tubules or ovarioles. And each ovariole contains a chain of developing ova. And the oviducts of each ovary, they unite into a single oviduct, which you can see over here, also known as the vagina, which is the common oviduct. That opens into the genital chamber. And then there is a pair of spermatheca that is present in the sixth segment that also opens up into the genital chamber. So this over here, you can see the spermat spermatheca that you can see over here. So I'll explain the process, how it takes step by step over here. So I hope you remember that we talked about sperms being present in the form of bundles in spermatophores. So the sperms are transferred through these spermatophores. The next thing is that after the fertilization, the fertilized eggs, they're encased in a capsule known as uthike. And these are about 8 millimeters long. They're dark reddish to blackish brown in color. And they're usually dropped uh, or they're glued to a suitable surface in the cracks or the crevices of uh, humidity or near a food source. Now, on an average, females produce about 9 to 10 uthiki. And each has about 14 to 16 eggs. Now the development is sporometabolous. That means that there is a nymphal stage. The nymphs are very much like adults. The nymph actually grows by molting about 13 times. So it undergoes a lot of molting process. That means shedding of the skin, the external exoskeleton about 13 times. And then it fully transforms into an adult. The second last nymphal stage, it has wing pads. But it does not have completely developed wings. The completely developed wings are present only in the adult cockroaches. Now many species of cockroaches, they are wild. They are not domesticated and they do not have any economic importance. Very few species are present in the human habitat. And they are basically treated as pests because, like I told you in the beginning of the video, they spread a lot of harmful diseases and carry lots of germs. And by contaminating food material, they can transmit a variety of bacterial diseases. So that is a lot of information to take in on one animal, that is the cockroach. I hope you've already gone through the video wherein we discussed about the earthworm in detail. And the next video in the same series is a video on the frog. So be sure to watch that one and thank you so much for watching this video.